All right, you just got NetSuite, and now you're getting ready to get started and, and learn a little bit more about what it can do and try and customize it more specific to your business. It can often be scary when you start getting into this because there's so much information to look at. It can kind of be overwhelming. So in this beginner course, I'm just going to try and help to break that information down a little bit more and make it a little easier to digest. First of all, we're going to just log into NetSuite, and you can go to the NetSuite login page to do that. For your customer account. I'm going to go ahead and click login. All right, so this is my own NetSuite account. All right, you can see that Anchor Group is up here at the top. This is a demo account we use for our Sweet Commerce Advanced website, as well as just to demo out a few other things that and customizations that we work on. You can see that you can go up here to the top right and you can look at different accounts that you may have access to. If you have several roles, like an administrator and maybe, maybe some other roles, like um, a deployer role, it'll show up and you can toggle between each of those roles. The first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and look into your employee record. Now you'll notice that there's some things that may be different from my screen here than what you may have. For instance, trade show. That doesn't really exist. That's a customization we added on. But in general, this is what your navigation should look like. You might need different roles and permissions to be able to have it look exactly like this. Ideally, this course is made for people who have an admin role. All right, let's go to our employee record. We're gonna to go to lists, employees, and right here, I'm gonna press control and left click so it opens it up in a new tab. All right, now we can go down to our different roles here. There's a lot of demo ones in here as well. I'm gonna go find me, Caleb, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click view. Here's my employee record within this account. And you can see that it's, it's pretty blank. We don't really have a lot of information that we need here. The, the main thing that you need to see is how to add access to different employees. You can create new employees and give them access to your account just by going over to here to access and you have to make sure that this is checked and then you can apply different roles for that account. They would use their email address for their login and then some type of password. You can manually assign it or it can make them sign in whenever they log in for the first time. Let's say that I want to add a different role. So I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to be in the access sub tab. The give as access is checked. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to this, this drop down and add bookkeeper. All right. And I'm going to click save. I can go back to access and you'll see that bookkeeper was added. Let's say you wanted to see if someone had decided to change their password. So I'm in the employee record and I'm going to go into this system information tab. And I can see that earlier today, I changed my password because a password was expired and I reset my password. The system information su in sub tab is available in most records and helps you see what types of changes has been done to that specific record. Let's say you have a sales order that goes through. It'll give you some information on that sales order as well under that information tab. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click this button and it's gonna expand all these sub tabs so that I can do a search. And I'll show you what I mean. So right now, you know that this give access button is under this access sub tab. But if I'm in system information and I click access, you'll notice that it doesn't come up with that field. There's only five search results. But if I go into the access tab and, and press it, you'll notice that it, it does end up finding it. In order to be able to search all the fields on a particular record, you can expand the entire sub list and now you'll see that they're, they're all expanded. All the views are expanded out, and we're gonna control F, and we're gonna find it. And those, now we have seven results. Then I'm going to decide that, okay, I decided, I figured out where things are at. I know that give access is under this access sub tab now. I'm going to go back over here to the right side, click this button, and it, it minimizes everything back to this tab view. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm often doing some custom scripting, which is essentially coding that automates a lot of your processes. So I'm often in this customization scripting scripts. So I'm just gonna click on that. All right, because I'm in this all the time, it's really useful for me to be able to add this as a shortcut. Take this and say, add to shortcuts. Name, you can add the shortcut name and save. And I'm gonna just go over to some other random one so that you can see that when I go to shortcuts and hover, 
scripts, it actually takes me right back to that page that I always go to. Shortcuts are a great way to navigate back and forth to all the different tabs and pages that you often go through for your role. Another useful feature is gonna be this recent tab. You'll notice that these are all the recent pages that I went to. Let's say that I wanna go back to my employee tab. So I'm gonna to go to recents and click on this. And now we're back to that. So it's a really easy way to navigate between your common tasks and ones that you're working on in the more immediate that are, you might not go to this employee record all the time, but you're working a lot within it today. One of the last things I'm gonna show you how to do is to use this search bar right up here. And this is a pretty powerful search bar, but you have to know the best ways to enter the information uh, just to get the details and results that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate back to my scripts. And let's say that I want to get to employee records. Well, I could just type employee and it's probably gonna show, right? You don't care about this search result. <laughs> this is obviously just a, a demo one, customer per employee for pizza and ice cream. Let's say you don't even want this to show up in the results here because you're trying to search for something very specific and you'll notice that it says page or search and it might say a lot of other different things. So I'm gonna just make that a little more direct and page employees. And then you will see that none of the search results even have that search and then that customer for pizza. And it's just a little bit better of a way to search because it brings up results that are a little more specific to what you're trying to look for. For instance, let's say that I want to look up a particular customer. And the reason why you might want to use that page customers versus customers is because it'll show up different results than what you would normally have. If I just put in customer, it'll show all these different types of customers that I have that are records, customer records. But if I type in page customer, it'll take me to a list. Instead, I get a list rather than individual results with their name. Finally, I'm gonna to navigate to some common things that you'll be seeing throughout this course. And I might also navigate to some things that I don't cover in this course, but you just might have exposure to and want to know they exist as you continue to learn more. You can go to support sweet answers. You can also go to help. There's, I'll explain the differences between those and help you navigate those in, in a later lesson, but that's a good way to learn on some documentation. Another thing is in customizations, you might hear workflows a lot. Workflows are used to automate some processes. It's a little bit less powerful than scripting, but it's a more of a visual way to be able to do automation. Scripting is requires a little more coding and there's you'll hear words like scheduled scripts and user event scripts and things like that. Those are more advanced customizations that you'll need a developer for. And then another thing is you'll be seeing setup and company that there's company information and enable features. These are pretty common places that you'll need to go to to make sure your account is set up. Another place in customization is customization suite bundler, and you can search and install and do a bundle audit trail for different bundles that you have installed. You'll probably be doing this a lot in the beginning as you're getting your account set up with all the different bundles that you purchased. Finally, the last really important piece is that when you're trying to set up your account for the first time, you're importing a ton of data. And oftentimes it's best to use a CSV upload and you'll be assigned to do something like that. So if you go to setup, import, export, CSV records, or um, all these different CSV options, that's something that you might use a lot and I'll cover that in a later lesson as well. I know that this is a whole lot of information. I just wanna be able to encourage you this is a very challenging project, but it's a very powerful software and it can do so much more than what you initially know right now. If you need some help with it, go ahead and give me a call or email me. I even have my personal cell on this page as well. We'll try and help you out as much as we can. We try to have the heart of a teacher and help explain things as well as we can. Go ahead and reach out to me and I'll try and get back to you within a couple hours if you have something more urgent. Otherwise, just keep on working through the course, get your feet a little more wet, to understand more about what NetSuite can do and help customize it more towards your business.